So just to uh, remind everybody, I'm visiting the Kirkland office and they said, you know what, let's grab a video camera and just talk about a few things and have a little bit of fun and put these videos up on the web. So one of the things that uh, we thought we'd talk about is a snippet. What are the different parts of a snippet? How do we choose which parts of a snippet to show? What gets shown? All that sort of stuff. So since we're up in the Pacific Northwest, it seemed fitting to try Starbucks and just talk a little bit about, you know, walk through this snippet for Starbucks and what it looks like and talk through the different parts. All right, so the first thing that you'll see is the title. And that's typically what you set on the title of your web page. So Starbucks homepage is what Starbucks used for www.starbucks.com. Now, in general, Google reserves the right to try to change the snippet and make it as useful as possible for our users. We're always doing all kinds of different experiments, like, you know, is it more helpful to show two dots or three dots? You know, do you want to end with dots? Do you want to start with leading spaces? How do you find the most relevant part of a page to try to say, this is what we should be showing? But the majority of the time, you have a, a great deal of control about how things get presented. So in this case, Starbucks used the title Starbucks Homepage. And just a quick bit of, bit of SEO advice for Starbucks, you know, homepage, yeah, a few people might search for that, but I might say something like Starbucks Coffee, because people are a little more likely to search for that. Anyway, okay, enough of the free advice for Starbucks. The next thing that you see is something we call the snippet. So in this case, it says Starbucks Coffee Company is the leading retailer, roaster, and brand of specialty coffee, da 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 on like that. Now, where does that snippet come from? It can come from many different places. Suppose, for example, we weren't able to call the URL. Maybe it was forbidden by request.txt. Uh, maybe for whatever reason it was down and we couldn't get a copy of it. So we don't have anything from the page, not even the meta description tag, nothing at all. In those cases, we sometimes do rely on the open directory project. So Starbucks, I wouldn't be surprised if it was in the open directory. So if we weren't able to crawl the page, we might pull the description from there. Another thing that we sometimes do is we pull the description from a place within the page. So suppose you've got a phone book and you're looking for somebody's name and the name is way down at the bottom. It's a lot more helpful to show that person's name from the bottom of the page and maybe a few words from either side of that person's name than it is to show like the first 50 words from that page. So we do try to find the most relevant parts of a page. Sometimes it's a single snippet, sometimes it's multiple parts of a page, and combine that together to give people a little bit of context. Is this page really what I'm looking for? But neither of those two, it's not the Open Directory project and it's not directly from within the content of the, the page body itself. In this case, I looked into it, and if you view source, this is the meta description tag. So we did a post on the Google Webmaster blog just a little while ago that talks about how these snippets get picked. And it turns out you can use your own meta description tag. And in many cases, that's exactly what we'll choose to use as our snippet. Now you want to be careful because this is a very fine snippet, but maybe there's some other snippet that would convert better. You know, people would read it and say, oh, I really want to click through and find out more about that. So you can experiment with different meta descriptions and see, you know, does one description get more clicks? Does one convert better? Things like that. But we do use several different sources of data when deciding how to pull things into a snippet. In this case, Starbucks is also a company. So we show a little, we call it a plus box, where if you want, you can click and you can expand and you'll get a stock chart for Starbucks. You can see whether they've been doing well in the market or not. Uh, there's a lot of these different options. For example, if you have an address on your page, Many times we'll show a plus box and say, view a map of, and then you can have your address. And we're always looking for new ways to surface interesting data. If you go to google.com slash experimental, we do have views where you can look at search results on a timeline, uh, search results on a map. You can even see all the search results with images and even measurements. So if you've done a search like koalas or koala bears, you can say, show me the measurements, and then it'll show you all the things like, oh, koala bears are 20 pounds and stuff like that. So it's really helpful. Uh, in general, whatever interesting information you have on your page that users would be interested in, we'll try to surface that or show relevant information like stock quotes and stuff like that. There's also something that's a little subtle that you might not have noticed, but we bolded the Starbucks, and that's because someone has done the query Starbucks. So oftentimes, if you do a certain query and those query words are on the page, we'll make them in bold so that people know, you know, what you typed is actually on this page. So we know about stimming, we know about morphology, we know about synonyms. So if you type in car, 
we can sometimes return search results that have automobile, but that wouldn't be bolded, or it wouldn't be as likely to be bolded. What's more likely is whatever you typed in is what's going to be bolded. So that gives the user a little more information. It shows how relevant that page really is. Working down a little bit, you can see the URL that you're actually going to land on. 12K stands for 12 kilobytes, which is a relatively small page. That means it'll load pretty quickly. Um, and then you see the cached link. So imagine, for example, that the site is down. Maybe, uh, maybe you accident, you know, if you're the webmaster of a site, maybe you accidentally deleted it. Well, then you could look at the cache page and you could, you know, recover the source of that page so that you could put it back up again. Um, the cache page also has a really interesting feature. If you click on it, it will show you when we last crawled that page. So you can say, okay, well, today's October 7th. Look at the cache page. Oh, we last crawled this page on October 6th. And so you can see how fresh our search results are. Sometimes, if our results are very fresh, we'll even show a little indicator right on the snippet that says, we crawled this 17 hours ago, to let you know that it's especially fresh. Similar pages shows you related pages to Starbucks, so maybe other businesses or other pages you'd be interested in. And a lot of the times, if you're logged into Google, you'll see note this. If you're a student or if you're doing research, this is really handy. It works with Google Notebook. And all it does is it says, save this off. As I'm doing my research, I want to save this result and be able to come back to it later and maybe aggregate all this stuff together on some research that I'm doing. And then this is really nice. Um, this is, would actually be a little indented on the snippet, but what we call this is site links. It's, uh, there's a couple things you need to know about site links. First off, no money is involved. Somebody always asks, so did Starbucks pay money to get that? No, it's completely algorithmic. There's no money whatsoever. Uh, and the second thing is, it is completely algorithmic. It's not done by hand, so it's not like we go to Starbucks and we say, oh, they'd be interested in the store locator and then nutrition and stuff like that. But there is a lot of sophistication going on here. For example, this page, the title is actually Starbucks Store Locator. But you don't need to see that multiple times, so we just say Store Locator. And if you look at this page, the title is actually something like Beverage Details and something, something, something. Um, and in fact, the, the link to that page said nutrition. So we're, we're sort of selective. We try to pick the shortest little description that gives people enough information where they can say, oh, the store locator is what I want. I'm going to go directly there. Or I wanted to find out if I get a no-whip mocha, how many calories is that? So I can go straight to the nutrition page. So it's completely algorithmic. No money is involved in that. And then when you get to the bottom, if we have a lot of results from a page, maybe we show one or two, and then we'll say, you know what, maybe you want to see more results from Starbucks. And what that lets you have is a little bit more diversity. So you can see one or two results from Starbucks, and then maybe you want to see other results for that query. And so that helps ensure diversity on the results page. And at the same time, lets you dive deeper if you want to. So that's just a very quick tour of what a snippet is on Google, how we compute some of it, and hopefully it gives you a few ideas about ways that you can look at improving your snippets so that you can get more users and hopefully a few more conversions as well.